Number one. When I was 20 years old, so six years ago, I worked as a delivery girl for a pretty popular pizzeria in my area. Initially, I worked the late morning to mid-afternoon shift, but when the guy who delivered for the night shift ended up getting fired for losing his license, I was placed on the night shift. I really didn't want that shift, because you never know if people who order late at night actually want a pizza, or if they have other intentions in mind. Unfortunately, my boss was an asshole, and essentially told me that if I wasn't willing to take the night shift, I was fired. I wasn't exactly in a position where I could be out of work, albeit temporarily, so I reluctantly worked the shift. The first month of this shift went by without any issues. That is, until I had to deliver a pizza to a house that just barely made our delivery radius. I punched it into our GPS, and the house was located in a pretty suburban part of the city. I arrive, and it's about 11pm. The block was extremely quiet, decently lit, and mostly littered with modern townhouses. The house I delivered to was a duplex. I ring the doorbell and wait for about 30 seconds. No answer. I ring it again and wait about another 30 seconds. Still, no answer. I'm standing there, getting pretty nervous that something's about to go down. But, thankfully, a man opens the door. He looked like he was in his late forties. He was pretty tall maybe a little over six foot, and he was very skinny. I tell him his pizza is here, and he just stands there, staring at me. I ask him if he's okay, and he responded by saying, Yeah, I'm fine, sorry. I got off work not too long ago, and I'm zoning out a bit. Fair enough, I suppose. He hands me the money, I hand him the pizza, and as I'm making change, he says, you're really beautiful, you know that. Not really thinking too much into it, I thanked him for the compliment and gave him his change. I said goodnight, and he did too. I walked back to my car and finished my deliveries for the night. A few days later, I get a delivery order to the same place. I head over there around the same time as last time, and again ring the doorbell. He answers the door very excitedly and said, Hey, it's you again. How are you? I told him I was tired, and that I couldn't wait to go home, which he chuckled at. I know that feeling pretty well, he said, as he was pulling out his wallet. As he's counting his money, he asks what my name is. Being kinda tired at this point, and not really thinking too straight, I stupidly tell him my name. As I'm making change, he asks if he could have my number, as he'd, quote unquote, love to hang out with someone as gorgeous as I am. Whoa, buddy, pump the brakes. I've literally only met this guy like twice to deliver a pizza. I had no idea who this guy was, and I'm positive he barely knew who I was as well. Another thing to mention is that I looked way younger than I was at the time. I was told by numerous people that I still looked about 15 and I was hoping that he thought differently, and wasn't hitting on me because he thought I was a teenager. I'm just standing there awkwardly for a few seconds, before I muster out. Sorry, I have a boyfriend. He gets upset, and says, Oh, okay, I see. We stand there in silence, before I tell him to have a good night and walk back to my car. He says nothing and still stands at the doorway, staring at me until he finally went back inside once I started my car. I got a pretty creepy vibe from this guy, and even brought it up with my co-workers. They agreed it was pretty creepy. They all agreed, that is, except for my boss, who overheard everything and claimed that I was just making up stories for sympathy. Fucking arsehole. A week later, I'm working the night shift, and we get an order from that same guy again. This is when shit really hits the fan. I arrive at the house around 10.30pm. 
Keep in mind that from my perspective on the road, it didn't look like a single light in that house was on. I get out of my car, and I walk up to the front door with the pizza box. As I'm approaching the door, it quickly swings open to reveal the man. Except this time, he was wearing a suit. I jumped back. He laughs and says, Sorry if I scared you. I saw you out of the window and figured I'd just open the door now so you wouldn't have to ring the bell. I was getting scared because, as I mentioned before, there were no lights on in his house whatsoever. He was just sitting in the dark this whole time? If so, why? I nervously laugh and say, it's okay. He asked me if I liked his suit, to which I said, yes. He then asks me, would you like to go on a date with me tonight? What the fuck? I once again tell him that I have a boyfriend, to which he chuckles, gets close to me, and says, Honey, there's no way a girl your age is in a serious relationship. If you go on a date with me, I'll show you how a real man treats a girl. He grabs the pizza box from me and throws it to the side. He then grabs me by my arms, hard. I'm officially shitting bricks at this point, and trying not to cry from the fear that was overwhelming me. I start pleading with him. Dude, please, I just want to go home. I don't want to go on a date tonight. He just stares at me with the most sinister look I have ever seen on someone's face, and says, I don't care. Get inside. Now. We're gonna have a good time. He starts trying to pull me into his house and I'm trying to resist as hard as I can. After a bit of struggling, he lets go of one of my arms, and starts grabbing something out of his pocket, which I presumed was a knife. I did something that to this day, I am thankful worked. I used my free arm to punch him as hard as I could in the stomach. This stuns him for a few seconds, and he loosens his grip on me, allowing me to break free. I quickly run to my car, and as I get in, he runs at me and starts trying to pull me out, holding the knife in the other hand. Why are you making this so fucking difficult? I grab a half-empty bottle of soda I had in the cup holder and throw it. Luckily, it hits him in the head, and he lets go. I slam the door, and then, all of a sudden... He jumps right on the hood of my car, and starts scratching and banging on my windshield with the knife. I put the car in reverse, and quickly back out of the spot, reversing down the road with him desperately trying to hold on. He's banging on my hood, screaming, STOP THE FUCKING CAR! I turn onto the next road as swiftly as possible, and luckily, he falls off the hood of my car. I slam the gas as hard as I could to get as far away from that sick bastard as possible. In my panicked state, I drove a couple of blocks down the street, and kept making turn after turn onto other side blocks as I feared he was following me. Eventually, I reached a red light, and I slammed on the brakes and just sat there at the intersection, frozen from what had just happened. I began crying and violently shaking as I was sitting there, it dawned on me that I had just come close to losing my life, and I couldn't help but feel that I shouldn't have been alive. Once the light turned green, I pulled over to the side, and just sat there, crying. Eventually, I get the energy to drive back to the pizzeria, and almost immediately after I walk in, my co-worker knew that something was wrong with me. I practically broke down in front of him and everyone else came to the front, wondering what was going on. I fought my tears, and explained everything that had just happened. My co-worker comforted me, and my boss surprised me, and began apologizing profusely for what had just happened, and for putting me on the night shift. He takes me into the office, and handed me the phone to call the cops. They arrive at the store, and I give them my statement, as well as taking pictures of any marks on myself and any scratches on my car. My co-worker followed me as I drove home, and I collapsed on my bed. Strangely enough, I managed to fall asleep. 
I quit my job the next day, and luckily, a friend of mine managed to hook me up with a new job at her clothing store. As far as the psycho goes, two days later, I received an update from the police. The entire duplex was owned by the guy's brother, who lived on the right side with his wife. The psycho lived on the left side of the duplex. I learned that he had been in and out of jail constantly, at first for robberies and assaults, but later on, it was for sex crimes. He had been released from jail for about five months before this encounter. When the cops arrived at the house, he was long gone, and his family had no idea where he had run off to. The police insisted that they would find him. Indeed, they did. Only not alive. Apparently, the guy had fled to a nearby city, and attempted to kidnap a teenager walking alone late at night on the street. Luckily, somebody happened to be looking out their window at the right time. And they called the cops, and the police caught him trying to force her into his car. He manages to flee, and the police chase after him. He blew a red light near a busy boulevard, and a van slammed right into the driver's side of the car. By some sort of miracle, the driver of the van only sustained minor injuries. The psycho, on the other hand, came to his wounds long before the ambulance even arrived. I thanked the officers for everything they had done and for informing me, and I walked out of the station. I walk down the street and light up a cigarette, taking in everything I had just been told. I don't wish death on people, but after hearing about his death, I felt relieved. I felt relieved that he couldn't hurt anyone anymore. I was relieved that I would never have to encounter him again, and that I wouldn't have to go through with charging him and reliving what had happened that night. My last experience two years before this was scary but I think this one takes the cake as being the scariest, as I was alone and face to face with a psycho. Who knows where I'd be if he managed to pull me inside that house. Number 2 My friends and I grew up in Oz, in a pretty run-of-the-mill suburban area. Our circle of friends was large back in the day, but the four core members of our little unit were myself and my three best friends, Johnny, Kev, and Seth. We were 16 years old at the time, and having a movie night at Seth's house. His parents had gone off to Perth for the weekend, and we had the whole place to ourselves. Well, not just us. Seth was looking after his German shepherd, a big old doggo called Bonzo. When we had all arrived, our first move was obvious. Help ourselves to Seth's dad's stock of booze. We spent the next few hours playing video games, roasting each other, and fawning over Margot Robbie and the Wolf of Wall Street. We got about halfway through the movie, when there was an unexpected knock on the door. Seth looked confused. He wasn't expecting any more visitors. At his request, I get up and go to the door with him. Maybe we'd been making too much noise, and his neighbours were coming over to complain. No. Standing there on the porch was a Domino's Pizza delivery man. He's holding a large pizza box in his hands. Hey, large pepperoni? Paid for online? Uh, what the hell? We hadn't even thought about ordering a pie. Well, as we all know. 16-year-olds and pizzas are natural allies, so we happily take it off his hands. I mean, prepaid. It was like a gift from the gods themselves. Who were we to say no? Um, yeah man, that's ours, Seth says. He gives him a couple of bucks for his troubles. You boys have a good night, the guy says, and he heads back to his vehicle. We bring the pizza into the living room and tell the other two how we'd just lucked out. A massive pizza for just the cost of a tip. Damn, I couldn't even remember the last time I had one of those bad boys. Well, Kev, Mr. Goody Two-Shoes as always, says that we shouldn't just eat somebody else's food. We were moral men after all. He says that the delivery driver couldn't have gotten far, 
and that there was still time to get him to come back. It was the right thing to do. Plus, if the store realized we'd stolen one of their pizzas, they might not deliver to Seth's house anymore. In the end, Kev managed to convince us. I guess we weren't assholes after all. The four of us left the pizza on the coffee table, and went into the kitchen to call up the pizzeria. We get through to them, and tell them that somebody else's pizza had been dropped off at our place, and that the guy should come back and get it, and take it to whichever hungry customer ordered it. They ask for our address, and Seth tells them. Um, are you sure it's a Domino's pizza? Yeah, mate. It's got your logo on the box. We haven't had any orders from that part of town all day. None of our drivers have been around there. Are you sure it's not a Pizza Hut box or something? Dude, I know what your pizzas look like. The delivery guy had your uniform on and everything. Oh, well, maybe it's from one of our other stores. We'll ask around and get back to you. We were all a little perplexed, mainly because we knew that no other Domino stores delivered to our area. Figuring this was all just some dumb mix-up, we decide to give them ten minutes to call us back. If they didn't, well, we'd just dig in. In the meantime, we fixed ourselves some snacks for the rest of the movie. We head back into the living room, and are shocked by what we find. Bonzo the dog had stuffed his face into the box, and eaten half of the bloody pizza. Some poor guy had just paid for Seth's dog to eat a sultan's feast. As funny as it all seemed, we were slightly annoyed that our good deed had gone unrewarded. I mean, if someone in the house was going to eat that pizza, we'd have rather it been us. The store never bothered to call us back, so we forgot about the whole thing and just got back to watching the movie. It's not long afterwards that the dog started to become noticeably distressed. He starts whimpering and whining and clambers off to the kitchen. Must be the pizza, we thought. Well, he could wait. It was his own fault after all. And that juicy scene was coming up in the movie. You know which one I mean. In hindsight, we shouldn't have waited. Ten minutes later, we realized that Bonzo was really ill. Thinking he must have gorged himself to the point of near death, we googled for an emergency vet in the area. We found one and the four of us rushed him there as quickly as we could. Bonzo really was near the point of death when we brought him in, but it wasn't for the reason we expected. The vet said that he was displaying unusual symptoms, convulsing and the like, so we ran a few more tests. What he found churned our stomachs. Traces of strychnine were found in Bonzo's system. It's a seriously dangerous poison used for killing birds and rodents. When ingested by humans, it causes your body to spasm, your eyes to protrude from your skull, and your brain and other organs to shut down. It only takes about 30 minutes to kill you. We later found out that the cheese on the pizza had been laced with it. Seth's parents came home as soon as they found out, and we told the police everything we could remember about the guy who gave the pizza to us. Sadly, nothing ever came of it in the end. There were no other reports of anyone receiving a poisoned pizza, and it seems like the guy never tried to pull this trick again. This was just a one-off attack of opportunity. It makes me wonder, did the guy specifically target us, thinking that some dumb kids would just selfishly eat a pizza someone else ordered? If so, does that mean he'd been watching us? How else would he have known that Seth's parents weren't in? Could he have been someone they knew? The mind boggles. I'm happy to report that Bonzo did indeed survive the ordeal, if only just. Had we arrived at the vets five minutes later, it's unlikely he would have pulled through. The thought that somebody might target others for no apparent reason terrifies me. If anybody brings food to your door that you didn't order, do the right thing and check with the company it's from. It just might save your life. Number 3 
I delivered pizzas between the ages of 19 and 23 in a crappy part of my town. One night near close, we got a shady sounding order to a fake address, and they changed it to another when we wouldn't deliver. We had a sneaking suspicion something was up, so I brought the cook with me, and we both brought large metal pipes with us. He just stood next to my car while I went to the door. When I knocked, the porch light flicked on and off a few times. I knocked again, and the porch lights flickered. It happens a few more times, until some grouchy, middle-aged man opens the door. Think Carl from Aquatine Hunger Force. Bluntly, he tells me he didn't order a pizza, and shuts the door in my face. When we left, we noticed a bunch of hooded guys in the bushes across the street. Later that night, a rival pizza chain driver was robbed on that street. Hi guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. I know what you're thinking, another video so soon, that's pretty rare these days, Lazy. Yeah, what can I say, I guess I've been living up to my name recently, but I'm um, trying to turn that around right now. Sent off some applications for a few things, so uh, I have a bit more free time at the minute, and I'm going to try and dedicate that to making as much content as I possibly can. If you did enjoy this video, then feel free to smash that like button, and you know what, I'm feeling generous today. I won't smash you if you don't. I just graciously request that you do. Please, please, I need the love and support. And um, yeah, I will see you in the next video, which should be very, very soon. Until then, guys, you all stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark.